Hi third grade, we're going to get into our social studies lesson for the day and it's found on page 330 <clears throat> using a population map. Population is the number of people living in an area or you could do the population of um, polar bears in Alaska. Um, a population in science we learned is a number of a certain species. When we're talking about states and population, we're talking about how many people live in those areas. So we're going to be taking a look at this map. Hmm. That's a map of Illinois. And many of you have heard of a famous city in Illinois. It's right along the edge of Lake Michigan, and it is Chicago. But Chicago is not the capital. The capital has a star, so if you look along here, you'll find that, hmm, Springfield. Springfield in the middle of the state is the capital. But Chicago is much more well known. Now, where is Illinois compared to where we are? In the back of our social studies book, we have a U.S. map. The colors show the different regions, and we're in this region, the southeast region. And Chicago in Illinois is right here in this Midwest region. So this is Illinois, not too far from where I'm from in Minnesota. Okay? Oh. So here's Illinois again and here's where we are down here in North Carolina okay it's just a good idea to kind of look and see where we're at what we're talking about and you know Illinois is not a country it's a state there are 50 states in the United States. North Carolina is one. Illinois is another. Minnesota is another state. Okay. So let's go to page 330 and we're going to read why it matters. As communities change, so do their populations. Population maps can show you where most people live. People are not spread out evenly on Earth. Different areas have different population densities. Population density is the number of people living in an area of a certain size, such as one square mile. So they would count the number of people who live there. If there's only a few, that's not a very densely populated area. If there's a lot of people, like in a city, that's a very densely populated. A square mile is a square of land that is one mile wide and one mile long. Places with higher population densities are more crowded. Cities usually have the highest population densities. So cities like Charlotte or Asheville they have a lot of people in a small area. And then when you move out into the country, you might drive for a long while and not see very many houses at all. They have a very low density. Maybe there's farm fields. Maybe it's out in the country. So we're going to practice. Use the map of Illinois population density on page 331 to answer these questions. Now, when I said Illinois, that was possessive. We're talking about their, their population density. Because we know that if we just say Illinois, there's no S. But if it belongs to Illinois, then it's Illinois population density. Okay, a little bit of grammar. So let's take a look. Number one. The map key shows four population densities. Here's our map key. It's colored four different colors to stand for the density. So 
which color is used for the highest population density, the biggest amount of people in the area? It would be the bright orange, just like we would expect near Chicago. And there are some other bright areas, Bloomington, Illinois, Springfield, Illinois. What is the population density of Princeton? Oh, now we have to find Princeton. Okay, I'm not sure. Oh, Princeton is up north. It's kind of north and central, so north and about in the middle. So if you look here, you see Princeton, and it's right in the green section. So when I look at the green, it says less than 50 people per square mile. Maybe that's farm area. Maybe that's out in the country. There aren't a lot of people living in that area. Number three, which has a higher population density? Jacksonville or Springfield? Well, we already found Springfield and it's got the bright orange. So now we have to find Jacksonville. I'm looking for Jacksonville. Hmm. I look around. I find it right here. And it's right on the edge of green and yellow. So it may have 50 or less, or maybe 50 to 100. It's right on the edge. It's like the farm that's right on the edge of the little, the little town. So which one has the greatest, the higher population density, higher? And we would have to say it would be Springfield because they have more than 250 people per square mile. Okay, we're going to go to our workbook now. We're going to be on page 88, where we see a map, but there's no color. So we're going to have to look at our key over here and see what our different shadings mean. Now notice this is a population map of Kentucky. Kentucky is another state. Kentucky is right above Tennessee. And it's also bordered by Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, and Illinois, and a little bit of Missouri. Now, if I look at that in my book, here's Kentucky. And here's North Carolina, not fo so far away. Okay, this is part of the Southeast region also. Okay, so let's go back to our workbook and take a look at that key. The map key says that there's more than 100 people per square mile where you see the darkest shading. So like these areas dark. Then we see stripes. There's lots of areas that have stripes going around them or going over them. Stripes don't go around, they go over. Huh? And 25 to 50, so even fewer people where there's the little polka dots, the little tiny dots. And then where you see the solid Lightest gray, that's less than 25 people per square mile. So that would be like this area. I bet that's like way out in the country. It's Kentucky, maybe they maybe that's where horses are. You know, Kentucky's known for having a lot of horse 
watercourses raised and they would need a lot of land without a lot of houses around. Farmers do too, farmers need that. So let's take a look at the questions. What is the population density of Louisville? Mm -hmm. it, it looks like Louise or Louisville. It's Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. Now, Louisville, Kentucky, I'm going to have to look for it. Um, when I look for Louisville, I see that it's right on the border of Indiana. But I'm interested in the shading. And I look at my map and that at my map key and that tells me so I can write that in for my answer. Number two, which pattern shows the highest population density? The highest. Is it dark gray, stripes, dots, or light gray? Okay, those can be your choices. Dark gray, stripes, dots, or light gray. Number three. Which city has a higher population density? Russellville or Bowling Green? Well, Bowling Green is right here. When I look for Russellville, I had found it. Where did I lose it? Oh, it's right below it. My finger was covering it. So there's Bowling Green right here in that dark gray, and then there's Russellville in the stripe. So you write the name, Russellville or Bowling Green, for which city has the higher density, the more people. Number four, what is the population density of Middle, Middlesboro? Middlesboro, I see Owensboro. Let's see, Middlesboro. I wonder if it's in the middle of the state. It's not. Here it is, near the Virginia border. We have Middlesview. And it's in the striped area. So I go back over here to find out what would that mean? What is the population density? Read it, write it down. Which city has a lower population density, Jackson or Richmond? Now we want to see which one has the lower density. So we have to find Jackson and Richmond. Now, Jackson is right here in the polka dots. Richmond is over here in the dark gray. Which one has the less number of people? Fewer people. Jackson or Richmond? Okay. And now I'm going to take a little bit of time to read our gal who's going on a trip. She might need to look at a population map or a road map. Amelia Bedelia. And the chapter is called Neither Here Nor There. Are we there yet? asked Amelia Bedelia. Her dad looked back at her in the rear view mirror. Then he said, that's the best thing about roaming around. Since we don't have a destination, wherever we are, we're already there. Wherever we are, we're already there. Because they don't have a specific place they're going to. Amelia Bedelia had to think about that for a minute. Then she said, well, if we're there, what can I do for fun? Her mother reached into her travel bag, pulled out a book, and handed it to her. Amelia Bedelia flipped through it, but there were no comics, no puzzles, no stories. You should get your money back, Mom, said Amelia Bedelia. 
all the pages in this book are blank. I know, said her mother. It's a journal. What's in it is up to you. You can write in it or draw in it or both. It will be your record of our vacation, like a diary. Her mother handed her a brand new box of colored pencils too. This feels like homework, said Amelia Bedelia. It can't be, said her dad. You're not at home. Well, she couldn't argue with that. It'll be fun, said her mother. Years from now, you can read it and remember what you were thinking and feeling. They turned onto a big highway and drove along the lots with lots of other cars. They listened to the radio until the last station faded into static. Then Amelia Bedelia noticed the noise that became the soundtrack of their trip. The hum of tires on the road, accompanied by the wind rushing by her window. Sometimes they passed other cars. Sometimes other cars passed them. Uh-oh, Amelia Bedelia is making faces out the window. Amelia Bedelia stared at the passengers. Where were they all going? Were they roaming too? A little boy stared back at her, then stuck out his tongue. She laughed and waved, and he waved back and laughed too. Amelia Bedelia gazed at the houses they drove by. What were those people like? Did they have dogs? Did they have kids her age? Would they be friends if she knew them? Did her friends miss her? Did finally miss her? Her daydream ended when her dad bellowed, Adventure, here we come, as he took the next exit off the interstate. He began singing, Off we go into the wild blue yonder. Amelia Bedelia was amazed. Her dad was so happy. He always sang the wrong words when he felt goofy. They had to drive much slower now because they were on a two-lane road. They drove past old houses and farms and barns. They drove by cows and sheep. They crossed a bridge and parked. We must be there, said Amelia Bedelia. Exactly, said her mother. Lunch will be served on the bank of that stream. I think this is probably in an area that does not have a high population density. They're out in the country, in the farm fields. Amelia Bedelia's father grabbed their picnic lunch from the trunk and pulled out a blanket for them to sit on. This will keep the ants from joining us, he said. Hmm, too bad, thought Amelia Bedelia. She kind of wished that some of her aunts, aunts and uncles and cousins had come along to keep her company in the back seat. It was times like this that she really wished for a brother and really, really, really wished for a sister. After lunch, her mother made an announcement. I was up late last night and early this morning packing. I'm taking a nap. Amelia Bedelia, you are in charge. Then she closed her eyes and put a floppy hat over her face. Amelia Bedelia buckled herself in. Her father leaned over and pointed at the map. We're right here, he said. His finger was on a picture of a tiny picnic table. Hey, said Amelia Bedelia, why didn't we sit at that table? It would have been better than the ground. There was no table, Amelia Bedelia, said her father. That picnic table is just a symbol. Like a map key has symbols, a picnic table is a symbol for a rest area where you might be able to sit and have a picnic, a picnic area. Look in the little box in the corner of the map. That's the key. 
Amelia Bedelia wondered if her dad needed a nap too. She's thinking of a cymbal. Have you ever heard of cymbals that crash together? They play them at bands like the drummer. That's what Amelia Bedelia was thinking. She's got the words mixed up. Symbol and symbol. Her dad meant symbol spelled with an S, but she's thinking symbol spelled with a C. They're homonyms. They sound the same, but they're spelled differently and have different meanings. Homophone sound. Homa means same. Phone means sound. Oh, a symbol wasn't anything like a table. She knew that because she had tried playing the symbols in the school band. And there was no box on the map. It was flat. Plus, who needs a key? You need a key to lock a door. But you don't unlock a map. You unfold it. Amelia Bedelia doesn't understand what a map key is. Amelia Bedelia's father started the car and pulled back out on the road. Well, so far so good, he said. Not really, said Amelia Bedelia. We haven't gone so far, and it hasn't been so good. So far so good. Hmm. Ha! came a laugh from under the floppy hat. Amelia Bedelia looked at the map again. The road they were on went through a green patch. She looked up and saw trees on both sides of the car. She noticed a square in the corner of the map filled with tiny pictures. A school had a little flag on top, just like her school did. A hospital was a red cross. A little envelope was a post office. A plane was an airport. Then she found each picture on the map itself. Maps are fun to figure out, said Amelia Bedelia. I'm glad you think so, said her father. Do you see where we are? Amelia Bedelia put her finger on the map. Yep, I've got us. Great, can you figure out how to get us to Route 23? He asked. Amelia Bedelia looked at the map. She turned it sideways, then upside down, then right side up. To prove that she was thinking, she let out a giant, hmm. At last she shouted, I've got it. Keep going straight, then turn left onto this blue squiggly road, and it'll take you, hmm, take you there. Hmm, hmm, said her father. He looked at Amelia Bedelia in the rear view mirror. A blue squiggly line is usually the symbol for a river. Sure enough, next to the blue squiggle picture was the word river. She was about to apologize when she noticed something about the road they were on. Dad, said Amelia Bedelia, what does it mean when the solid black line for the road changes into a brown line with dashes? She looked up as they passed a sign that read, Pavement Ends. A dirt road, bellowed her dad as they skidded a bit on gravel, raising an enormous cloud of dust. Snorp, whew. Amelia Bedelia giggled at the sound of her mother snoring. Her dad smiled and said, I can't believe she can sleep through all of this. They bounced along in the car until they came to a stop sign. The road they were on ended and another sign gave them a choice. They could turn left or right. They can't keep going straight. The road ends. You have to go left or right. This isn't on the map, said Amelia Bedelia. Which way should we go? I have no idea, said her father. I vote for left, said Amelia Bedelia. I'm thinking right, said her father. Call it, said a voice under the hat. 
Heads, shouted Amelia Bedelia. Tails, shouted her father. Amelia Bedelia's mother was wide awake now. She could always be counted on to make a decision. She pushed back her hat and flipped a coin in the air. She looked at both of them and then lifted her hand to reveal the winner. Tails it is, she said. They turned right and away they went to whatever might come next.